Hello viewers, CBGT here. Welcome back, thank you for joining. Okay, Manufacturer Series Gran Turismo, let's jump straight back in. Here's my points total. 202 being my lowest score so far. Well, 191 actually is lower, but 202 is my lowest counting score. Let's try and beat that, shall we? Okay, we're jumping in to a race around Interlagos, a track which seems to come up a fair amount on this game. And here we find ourselves at it once again. Alrighty. Qualifying first up. Now, found myself at the front. We, you don't, you don't want to be at the front. You want the slipstream. So we just suddenly braked, which is kind of a big no-no. But it's Gran Turismo. It's not real life. So who cares? We find ourselves behind this Viper. Okay. As we head across the line, let's try to set ourselves a lovely little lap time, shall we? To put us somewhat towards the front of the pack. As we head through the center S, uh, oh, okay, we try to cut that. Is it gonna be a penalty? Yes, it is, yep, yep. One pixel over, but, well, you can't go over the limit, can you? Luckily, there was just about enough time to go back into pit lane and head back out onto circuit for another lap. And I found myself behind a fellow BMW user, so there shall be no indication in this following clip. Uh, but at the end of the lap, well, he just drove away from me. It wasn't a great lap at all. 1.4 seconds off the lead. It was 13th as I went over the line. Eventually turned into 17th, as you can see here. And, well, that's just not good, is it? It's nowhere near the front. Well, we head into race one with something resembling high hopes for this one because the BMW Group 4 car is actually pretty decent fuel saving. And fuel saving is the theme of this race. As you can see here, um, we only have about 10 and a half laps of fuel remaining, even though there's 15 laps of the race remaining. Now that's a bit of a problem. So the, pr uh, the, the solution to this problem is to fuel save, to save a damn lot of fuel. I know that uh, the environmentalists will be rather proud of my fuel saving ability after watching this. After watching this, although they'd rather prefer that I just didn't race at all. Although it is electronic, this isn't real life, so no fuel is actually being used. There you go. Anyway, you can see that um, the pack is really rather close. It's, the dynamic of this type of race is very different. Everyone is trying to go slow, if that makes sense. Everyone's trying to save fuel. Because the alternative is that you just attack, you just burn your fuel, and then you have to go into the pit lane and get some more. Like the cars, uh, sorry, the pit lane loss time is so big that you just really don't want to do that. Uh, so, you, the best way to do this race is to fuel safe and not have to stop, not to go into the pit lane. That's what we're going to try and do. We're going to try to tuck into this group, try to make our way through the group, if at all possible, and use the slipstream of the cars in front to save ourselves a little bit of fuel as well. And, and, and with these types of races, often it's a case of just going with the pace of the pack. You kind of have to go along with however quick the people in front of you are going and then worry about the fuel saving later. Well, we are going to try and save as much fuel as we can. You can watch the, the green meter at the bottom right of the screen as we go for an overtake. Oh, just tap the, uh, sorry, the Aston Martin. And I was sort of half expecting a penalty there. It didn't quite materialise. So perhaps we've got away with one there, but we do gain a position. He's still on our left-hand side, but we do have the right-hander in our favour here. And, oh, again, into the side of the Aston, but more to secure the position rather than to overtake the Aston itself. And we have actually finally secured the 15th position. So into the final corner of the lap. So a bit of that fighting there has actually cost us the slipstream of the BMW just in front. You see that here as the Aston doesn't have the straight line speed. We've got the inside. I'm going to be fairly attacking here and go for it. Let's have some great endeavour and try to push forward with our race. Car ahead serving a penalty. Actually, there's, they go side by side through this corner here, just scanning up ahead. So just, just having a look at that. Something potentially on here as uh, the Aston behind looking for a return move. Moves up the inside. Someone's serving a penalty. This is going to get rather awkward down into turn four. Aston on the inside coming back for that uh, position. And he's going to get it. So we're going to move back down a position, down to 15. So how about that fuel? How's it looking? As we sit in 15th, 
not great at the moment. I'm going to go into fuel mix six. So look at that at the bottom right of the screen. You'll see that I'll try to go into some leaner fuel settings to save a bit of fuel when I can. You're probably wondering why I'm short shifting, but that is again to save loads of fuel. This was a lucky moment here. Going up the inside of one, two, three, and now the Viper going to be here. So we're going to we're going to try to go past the Viper as he serves a penalty. So four positions in about eight seconds there, if not less. Not a bad little return for that little section of the race. As we are, on, what are we on? Lap five, up into 11th. Started 17th and gained six positions thus far. But you see a lot of this fighting has caused us to drop off the group in front. And um, I had to attack. This is the problem. If you want to move forward, you have to, you have to burn your fuel. We you have to use a lot of fuel. And I did manage to burn a lot of fuel, but also get onto the back of the Ferrari, go past them, up into 10th. But um, at what cost will this be at? This is the question. Will I have burnt up too much fuel? Will I run out of fuel? These are eternal questions for our ages. As we cross the line to begin lap number eight, um, you see there I've burnt already more than 50% of my fuel. And we're not quite 50% into the race. So that is a bit of an issue, if I must say so, myself. And quite a big group up in front, but quite a big gap to that group. So things aren't looking good. So this Aston Martin, once again coming back, I'm not going to fight him. Sometimes it's best just to let them go. You can see it in the slipstream, save a bit more fuel and let them burn their fuel instead. So we're going to do exactly that. Any cyclist enthusiast among you will kind of understand this you know, sitting behind in the slipstream it's the same concept really fellow BMW user goes through now by this point it was clear that I had attacked way too much too early too much too soon young son and I now just had to go on a fuel saving retreat and um, bring it home or at least try to and well I just go and do that don't I go and get myself a silly penalty Although there's a bit of a gap behind. Sat here in a rather, well, I was going to say uncomfortable, 12th. The, the group behind is quite close. So you can see here, going into lean mix 6 through this infield section, through the corners. You don't really need as much power through this corner section, so you might as well just try to save a bit of fuel through here. But it's on the corner exit where you want to kind of go back into a leaner setting, although I'm keeping it in 6, so that's how desperate my current situation is as um, I have cars bearing down upon me this Mercedes case in point so lap number 15 now can I save enough fuel well I've, I've only got 4% of fuel left oh, and I, I'm an idiot I've got myself a penalty and that is not going to help me at all I've only got 2% of fuel left now 0% as we come across the line in fact we are pretty much going to run out just before the line, you see I'm slowing down. And then when once you add on that one second penalty, back to 15th, really disappointing. Really, really disappointing. Is a Viper that wins the race. Where's that? Where did that M4 finish? About seventh or eighth. Uh, so the BMW does have potential, but I just did not unlock it at all. So once again, uh, post-mortem. I can try and say it properly. Post-mortem analysis. Let's see where that race died of death. Now looking at this, this is about halfway into the race, pretty much halfway, halfway through the middle lap. Now have a look at the fuel meter here, you can have a look at the tyre wear as well, but the fuel is the most important thing. So most people here at halfway are on 50% of fuel or more, BMW a little bit under there. But once we get to me, it's a slightly different story there, like 47 maybe? So I've, I'm just under, and that might not look like a, a lot. But a couple of percent is a lot, and it can take a whole lap of fuel mix six to try to recover that. So this is a little bit, a uh, little bit of practice we did. 38.6. That's the kind of lap time we need. That kind of lap would have put me well inside the top five on that previous race. So qualifying is really important as well. So we're going to jump in to race number two. Now, of course, in any sort of racing, if you make an absolute hash of a race, you try and learn from it. And I made an absolute hash of that previous race, so I'm going to try and learn from it. And we return here. And I make a hash of this because I was trying to get into the slipstream of the car in front, but I just left the gap a little bit 
too big, which was a mistake, but we can still try to recover our lap. I mean, Slipstream might gain you two, three, four tenths, maybe. Maybe more around this track. But as long as we can just try to set a, a nice clean lap time, then it hopefully won't matter too much, but we'll see. Through the centre rest, let's try not to get a penalty this time. So being a little bit uh, more conservative with our line that time, just to make sure we don't get that penalty. Down the hill towards turn number four. Coming through here quite nicely. If I can just get into the slipstream range of the, the Mustang ahead, then that'd be great uh, onto the back straight. So I can still make the most of some slipstream. So the potential here, uh, the potential is there. Just need to make sure that this infield is a good infield. And then we're onto the back of him at the end of the lap. That would be great. So through this corner, just coasting and then back on the power nice and early onto the kerb. Back over to the left. And then this corner is really just about rotation. Try to get that car turned and then on the power, stamp on it. Back over to the right to give yourself a better angle of entry into this long left. And then up into the final corner. Crucial one this, because it leads down to such a long and uphill straight. Have I got close enough? Probably not. The guy in front is setting a really good lap time there. Let's see how we've done. Let's cross the line. So up into third. In fact, the guy in front was the quickest guy. So I've got myself right behind the, the correct person. I just didn't quite get close enough. And perhaps if I was in the slipstream, that could have been a pole position right there. So that's the difference. Um, but still a, a good lap and a lot better than 17th, which is what we managed on the previous one. Uh, so fourth at this point here. A couple of people still yet to finish their lap, so we could drop, and we do. Down to seventh. Okay, a little bit disappointing to drop some positions, but uh, we're in a much better position. I'd much rather take seventh than 17th. And I, I'd, I'm sure you'd agree with me on that one. Okay. Now we're going to try and do a much better job of, of, of this race compared to the last race. We're trying to beat our points total of 202 uh, from previous rounds of the Manufacturers Series. And uh, in the first race we only got 134, so not really anywhere near what we need. I should be able to get 200 minimum on every, every round that I do here. And uh, perhaps aiming towards the upper 200s into the 300s if we're on a good round. So, let's get this race underway, down the back straight, down the hill behind the Ferrari, considering a move, but we're just going to sit behind for, for the time being. And um, So there, there is a consideration here, obviously you have to manage your own fuel, but you also have to manage just the general pace of the race. You know, if people at the front are going to go for a, a fast pace, sometimes it might be an idea to just to try to keep up with them and stay in the slipstream and then worry about the fuel later or you kind of just forget about everyone else and just do your own thing and save as much fuel as you need as you need and then just kind of just almost disregard everyone else and just forget that they exist um but we're going to go from a bit of a mix you obviously have to think about your your own fuel but we're going to try to just roughly go with the pace of the race and see how it goes and worry about stuff further down the line which is a well it doesn't sound like I'm learning from my first race because uh, we, we we used way too much in the first race and then worried about it too much at the end and lost a few positions although ultimately I did move up positions in that previous race so you could argue it wasn't such a bad approach okay so we're gonna move up into sixth place here and sadly as we just zoomed in on the the uh, the tower on the left hand side there we have already dropped out of slipstream range you can probably already tell from fifth place uh, so that is a bit of a problem problem number one has made itself known in this race the fact that we are not within slipstream range already so this gives you a problem do I just run my own race now or do I attack burn more fuel to get back into the slipstream now at the end of lap three I'm on 77 percent fuel now this is quite an easy race to measure because every three laps I should use 20% and therefore already I've used about 23% or to be accurate 22%. So I'm already a little bit I, I, I'm already a little bit over schedule with my fuel. I've used a bit too much in this first fifth of the race. This is lap number six, so at the end of this lap I should be on 60%. 
they can always just measure how much fuel you should be on after every three laps is quite an easy way of doing it and uh, you know this is something this is just basic fuel management really you just just know the percentages after each lap and then you sh you have a target to aim for and you should know if you're above or below schedule at this point we are well the percentage is below schedule we've used too much fuel at this point in time and across the line we go at the end of lap six you see that i'm on 54 53 percent okay so i should have been on 60 or 59 to be absolutely precise um, but so I'm a good five or six percent below what I need to be on and well that spelt trouble for me in the previous race but I am now in the slipstream this is the thing it's like the guys in front are setting quite a fast pace so I'm just wondering are these guys not bothering with fuel saving we're all in the same boat so hopefully uh, well we might be in the same boat here so this could work my way I'm not sure um, so the McLaren in the lead sorry not the McLaren the, uh, the Ford Mustang in the lead uh, burning quite a lot of fuel, going at quite an intense pace. Already on 32% fuel, that guy. Uh, so he goes into the pit lane, and we can see how much time that costs you because you just, as we said earlier, you don't really want to go in the pit lane here. Just you, you lose too much time doing it. And um, uh, courtesy of that, we move up one position, and and now we're sat in uh, fifth. So this is exactly halfway into the race, and. I'm on 44%, so I'm probably at, I'm actually in a worse situation, I think, than the first race. I think in the first race I was probably on about 47. But here, 44. Uh, so this pace is a lot more intense than the, than the previous race. Um, so we're going to have to worry about this fuel at, at some point soon, because we're in the second half of the race now. I've already burnt 57% in the first half, which leaves me only 43% in the second half. So that's quite a big difference. I'm going to have to use 14% less fuel in this second half than I did in the first half. Um, okay, so another car going into the pit lane. And how much fuel are they on? 44%. I'm on less than that. And they've gone in and I haven't. Okay, so that's quite worrying. But they think they have to go in and I, I'm so confident that I don't think I do. <laughs> we'll see who, who's right on that one. So I found myself now in fourth, and uh, this is, I mean, this is a good position to be in. This will give me a decent points total, but um, I'm in a precarious situation with the fuel. Uh, drinking game for the word fuel, and if you want to rewind the video and play again, you're probably absolutely slaughtered by this point. But, um, right, lap number 10. By this point, right, I just decided I'm not going to try to stick with these guys. I'm, you know, I'll let them go. I'm not going to try and stick with their pace. I'm just going to do my own thing now and just try to hope that I can make it through to the end. So you can see here, going into the lean mix six, so a lot of lean mixtures here being utilised in this final third of the race, or this final half of the race, just to make sure that we can bring it home. So what was it on lap? Or oh, halfway into the race, we were about six percent um, below schedule with our fuel. I have to bring back 6%. I have to utilise fuel mixture, the absolute short shifting. I have to really short shift. Now this car can be short shifted quite a lot because it's got 7 gears. So you might notice the rev gauge barely barely being engaged and uh, before I go up a gear. But this car is actually not too bad for that. Uh, it goes quite well when you short shift it. So across the line we go at the end of lap 10. So that's 2 thirds into the race. So I should have 33% but I had less than 30 so we are still 5 or so percent under um, so the thing we have to manage here is the gap to the cars behind which is about 3 seconds at this point in time and by this point here this is lap number 13 only 3 laps to go or less than the gap is only 2 seconds 2 seconds and you know that might seem comfortable and normally it would be in a race where you don't have to worry about fuel but in a race where I am using lean mix 6 I mean a lap around here on lean mix 1 compared to lean mix 6 is probably about two seconds so I've just got to hope that the guys behind are also trying to burn fuel desperately as well and you never know um, I think that um, GGA Fonseca who is the guy behind in the Audi TT 
he didn't start fourth, he started quite a lot further back. So by having to come through the pack like I did in the first race, uh, you, you have to burn quite a lot of fuel. So I'm just hoping that he's actually burnt quite a lot of fuel as well and has to do quite a lot of management now. Uh, so he has a group with him. He has about two, three cars behind him who he's towing along. So any one of those could spring a surprise and come for the attack here on the last two laps. So I've done a bit better now on the fuel. Um, almost two laps remaining off fuel with two actual laps remaining in the race and 12% off fuel remaining to go. So things are looking a bit better, but still not ideal. This is the decision you have to make at this point in time, which is, do I save more now and have a little bit in reserve so that if I get into a fight on the last lap, I've got some fuel to actually fight. You don't want to be a sitting duck on lean mix six on the final lap with the guys hunting you down and trying to go for a move. Because if I'm on lean mix six, there's nothing I can do. I'm going to have to like basically let them go through. So I'm going to save a bit more now if I can. The thing I don't want to give them is a slipstream. So as soon as they have the slipstream, then they're going to save even more. And I'm not going to save any. Uh, so coming into this section, we're going to lean mix six. Try to save as much as we can. Try to short shift as well. It's getting very precarious, this situation. The group is catching. First and second have long gone. You can see the gap now fairly lengthy. And uh, they've done a good job on fuel. Managed it a lot better than I have. I think I spent, I dilly dallied on the first three or four laps, deciding if I should get into their group or not. And I should have just attacked, just gone mental for one lap and just caught them up. Um, but I just kind of half heartedly did it. That was the problem. So with one lap to go, I actually have one lap of fuel remaining technically, with 6%. But let's not forget, of course, that 0% also counts. So I technically have 7% left. Now this is looking okay. The gap is still two seconds, and I think that the, the charge of Mr. Fonseca there has slowly died down. By laps of nine to 12, he was really gaining on me very quickly. But then I think he over, overworked himself and demanded far too much from his car. And fortunately for me, that was enough to just about secure a beautiful and sens a sensational podium in a fuel saving race. Now I'm rather well known for running out of fuel far too early. I mean, I did it in the first race. But learn from your mistakes, kids, and you shall reap the rewards in life. And we're gonna do that. Look, crossed the line with 0%. Absolutely perfectly timed, we've done it. Absolutely get in there, Lewis. So we finished third. That's a good result. I'll most certainly take that. And um, we're gonna bring home a fairly decent score of how many points 285 i'll take that but that's the end of this one thank you so much for watching do drop a like if you did enjoy i'll catch you next time thanks for watching goodbye